What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and it's Top 10 Thursday. The PlayStation 4 is a pretty amazing system. It's got cool indie games, weird scary stuff, and hundreds of great multiplayer titles. If you're ever craving a unique adventure, all you gotta do is grab a controller and a buddy and you're in for some fun. So this week, I want to honor those. Let's dive into my picks for the Top 10 Best 2-Player PS4 Games. Number 10. Dying Light. The thought of being trapped on a tiny island with millions of zombies that go insane at night isn't exactly what I'd call a happy concept. If that wasn't bad enough, you also have to worry about the psychopathic humans who have taken this undead crisis as an opportunity to build their own army. Climbing buildings and scoring kills in this broken city is hard, but it's certainly 20 times more enjoyable if you have a friend backing you up. Dying Light is a game that focuses on the little challenges of survival. Making bombs to distract enemies and getting to safe zones is an every day struggle and it's here where the true story happens. Having someone to watch behind you, shoot the monsters on your tail, or sacrifice themselves so you can get away is terrifyingly entertaining. Number 9. Overcooked. At first glance, you might think I'm silly for putting a cutesy cooking project on this list, but Overcooked is seriously fun. Each player is a chef at work at an extremely busy day in the kitchen. Instead of telling you how to handle the chaos though, the game leaves it up to you and your partner to talk out the quickest way to prepare food. At the top of the screen, you can see what people are ordering. This can be a burger without lettuce, a pile of french fries, or just some soup, but making it is always going to be a messy, multi-step process. Yelling at your teammates about washing dishes, racing against the clock to keep customers happy, and doing your best not to catch the whole place on fire is hilarious. I can't bake very well in real life, and yet I certainly have a deep love of Overcooked. Number 8. Alienation. As you walk through the destroyed landscape, you check your robot's health meters and see if your special abilities are ready again yet. Around every corner of this wrecked zone is aliens that don't think, they don't plan, they just kill. To say they're alive sort of feels wrong because these creatures are basically more of a virus. At this point, almost no one is even left breathing on the planet except for our two heroes. With the help of a brave bro in a mech suit, your only assignment is to burn every monster you can off Earth and reclaim our ruined towns. This game is a twin-stick shooter, but one that prides itself on somehow finding an interesting balance of being slightly overwhelming and still epically enjoyable. You're given short moments to catch your breath between waves of invaders pounding on you before you take another step and get flooded by hundreds more aliens. The only rule that matters here is walk slow, aim fast. Number 7. Towerfall Ascension. There's an odd kind of happiness I get from playing a game that pushes me to think of combat in all new ways. Towerfall Ascension really blazes its own path due to one simple design idea. You're an archer who's battling their way into the highest reaches of an increasingly difficult castle, but what will make you die the most often isn't the creepy twisted angels, it's just losing all your arrows from missing shots. Every time you fire a missile in Ascension, the bullet actually flies across the screen and hits either a bad guy or a wall. No matter what it strikes though, it sticks. At the start of a map, you're only given 5 arrows, so how you shoot is really more important than anything. Thankfully, when taking on this co-op style action, your friend's bolts can be grabbed as well. This adds an extra layer of depth, where you and your teammates try to dodge death dutifully while also deftly trading darts to avoid a devastating demise. I have way too much fun writing these scripts. Number 6. Borderlands The Handsome Collection on the sandy desert world of Pandora, there's a legend that's known throughout the galaxy. Hidden under this dusty surface is a secret vault said to hold billions of dollars in gold, super weapons, or perhaps just infinite power. An offer that tempting is too much for some adventurers to pass up, so there's a constant stream of bounty hunters coming to Pandora to investigate the rumors for themselves. Unfortunately, a majority go insane from the heat before they discover the true heart of this mystery. The good news is, now it's your turn to pick a character, unlock some elemental magic, and bring along your favorite companion for carnage. The Handsome Collection brings together both Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel, leading to loads of hours of shoot and loot awesomeness. Where this series really shines brightest is in the humor. 
Every situation is just so absurd that you can't help but laugh, and when you're standing with your friend facing a giant dragon inside a game of D&D, you're gonna be glad you tried this. Number 5. Don't Starve Together Imagine if a developer was insane enough to try and cram the building of Minecraft into the bizarre artistic mind of Tim Burton. The final product would likely have a lot in common with Don't Starve. Let me just warn you that this game doesn't explain anything. Whenever you start a new playthrough, you and your associate just wake up in the woods with no items, no sense of direction, and no plan on how to defend yourselves. Beyond just having to worry about being killed by bears and stuff, our characters also need to eat and drink to stay healthy and make sure they don't go crazy in the process. Personally, I thought that playing this alone was kinda cool, but it didn't have that sense of frenzied energy that I was hungry for. However, in co-op matches, there's a dangerous feeling of importance to every choice you make. If you break a weapon when fighting a demon, or accidentally let the fire burn out at night, you know that there's more than just your life on the line. Moments like that are why I think this title can truly test your trust in bold ways you won't see coming. Number 4. Bro Force. I have a real soft spot for purely funny indie projects. In an age where every game is aiming to be darker and more serious, I respect a designer who cares more about putting a smile on your face. Broforce is a 2D shooter with destructible environments, millions of cartoonish villains running around, and a hilarious cast of heroes. Every single person you see in this game is making a mockery of a classic action movie. You've got Rambo, the Terminator, and even Judge Dredd all joining in on a battle for freedom. Well, maybe it's not freedom so much as the gleeful experience of nuking whatever's in sight with machine guns. The first time I ever turned on Broforce is when my actual brother had just moved back from Mexico. We sat down and blasted evil nameless soldiers for hours, and we screamed with laughter every time we accidentally exploded ourselves without meaning to. Levels are littered with fuel barrels and random rockets that are essentially begging to be hit, and a tiny tap leads to utter annihilation. Do yourself a huge favor and spend an afternoon soaking up this goofy mission of conquest. Number 3. Hell Divers. The genre of isometric adventures has surprisingly been slowly growing in popularity over the last few years. There's clearly a rising fanbase that eats up a straightforward game with very little story and non-stop bloody gunning. Helldivers is the pinnacle of this philosophy because it gives you so many options for how you can handle situations. There are tons of weapons to choose from, ranging from sniper rifles to heat lasers. There's just so much detailed customization, making it where you can determine if you think it's more vital to heal your squad mates or do something like have extra flamethrowers that can be dropped from orbit. Later on, you even gain access to super suits that are nearly unstoppable but have very limited gas. This massive arsenal combines to make Helldivers a wholly unique adventure, but it stands out even more during co-op. Yelling at a friend to give you cover fire while you hack a terminal, dropping turrets to slow down the creatures chasing you, or just counting the seconds until a helicopter arrives is heart-pounding excellence. Number 2. Salt and Sanctuary at this point, we've seen many people attempt to copy the magic of Dark Souls. This has led to mixed results of games that were pointlessly hard or flawed to try and imitate difficulty. One project that managed to nail the true perfection of Souls, though, is Salt and Sanctuary. This side-scrolling RPG centers its plot around a duo of mercenaries who wash up on the shore of unfamiliar lands. Their job originally was to bring this princess to a king and have them married to tie their families together and stop an upcoming war. Sadly, their ship is attacked by a strange sea monster and she's lost in the waters. Now it's our duty to find her and bring her home, or at least get a ton of cool swords and stab some crazy bosses. When I said that this is essentially a Dark Souls clone, I meant that in the greatest way possible. The controls are just so solid that you never feel like you died for no reason. If you get crushed by a shadowy beast, you you know deep down that it was totally your fault for not dodging properly. Going into Salt and Sanctuary blind with a buddy who hasn't tried it either creates a beautiful sense of twisted fairy tale wonder. Number 1. Diablo 3. The granddaddy lord of all dungeon crawlers is something I wouldn't have thought would work so well on consoles just due to its complexity, but it really does. 
It's packed full of classes to play, demons to kill, and spells to throw. Every second spent in Diablo is a great time. While the initial release version of this game was already nearly flawless, for the Reaper of Souls expansion they somehow slammed in more ways to bring on murder and mayhem. In case you haven't tried this before, all you need to know is that every map is randomized to keep things fresh, every monster is spilling shiny loot, and each time your experience bar fills up you're getting talent points to grow and expand your hero. Diablo 3 is actually one of the highest selling games ever, simply because the fun never ends. As soon as I figured that I was done with an area, I could just grab a buddy and go back in and discover new quests and new things to do with a friend by my side. Because of its haunted setting, awesome cutscenes, and fantastic fighting with your buddies, I awarded this my pick as the best two-player PS4 game. Did your favorite game not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Hey, uh, I know the video is technically over, but I wanted to sneak in a little special message to you. Five years ago today is the anniversary of, well, one of the biggest moments of my life. My teeth are actually fake. I, I know they still don't look great, but they used to look like this. All of my front teeth had to be replaced because they were so rotted and damaged. All my life though, I wanted to do something and talk about video games. I always wanted to do something where I could tell people about how much I loved video games, but I was so afraid to smile. My whole life I talked and, and did this my whole life. I almost had like a lisp because I was afraid of people seeing my teeth. But I managed to improve, I managed to get these fixed, and I managed to do something to improve myself so I could follow my dream. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you don't deserve to follow your dream. I never would have imagined that the kid who used to get called Freak would someday have nearly 60,000 subscribers. So remember, screw the haters, do what you want. Oh, hey! I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.